Hello, everybody. Uh, I'd like to start thanking Katarina Valdivia Brook for inviting me for the symposium and also Cecilia Fajardo Hill, who is sharing this panel with me today. So this talk is going to be about a very, very little part of my upcoming book on women, Brazilian women artists uh, from the 60s until the present. So 60 years of uh, practices of resistance of women artists. Um, so uh, the, the main narrative about Brazilian women artists is that uh, these artists had always had a seat on the table, that they had a very privileged position uh, in relationship to their peers in other parts of the world. So these artists, they uh, had been recognized by, by her male peers uh, in Brazil. They were part of the conversation and they had visibility in Brazilian society. But that does not mean that they didn't have to challenge, to, to face some challenges because they were women. And uh, these challenges uh, are something that is not very much mentioned in the literature on Brazilian art, and that's what the book addresses. The fact that even if they were part of the discussion, if they, were, they had a seat on the table, uh, you know, if they would talk about issues related to gender politics, especially uh, during the 60s and 70s, that would be seen, that, that was seen as something that was uh, uh, minor, that was um, too personal, too subjective. So this was a topic that was uh, dismissed at the time as not being so important. And, and the book explains why this was not so uh, important and well regarded at the time. But even then, even if they did not call themselves feminists, as many of these artists did not do, uh, they did address issues related to gender politics. And, and I think this was a very kind of, they did it in a very kind of subversive way, in a very kind of of transgressive way, and that's what um, I'm addressing here. So let me share with you uh, my screen, and we are going to, we'll, we'll go from there, um, slideshow from start. Okay, here we are. So uh, the title of this uh, talk is Taking Out the Tongue, meaning acts of resistance, right? The way that you put your tongue out to um, challenge uh, and to resist. So the first image that I wanted to show you is this one by Ana Maria Maiolino called by a thread. And you see that she's connected by a thread to her mother and her teenage daughter. Um, and that's quite interesting for me, this image, because it talks about this, uh, you know, this passage of one generation to the no another and talk about this mat matricentric lineage, which I think very much uh, is part, is a, is a major part of uh, Brazilian visual arts. The role of women artists in, in Brazilian visual arts is really uh, very, very important. But also there is this, this connection, this kind of umbil umbilical cord that, that connect these women uh, in this transmission of knowledge. And the book is about this passage of knowledge from one generation to another, but also the ruptures that exist from one generation uh, to, the, to the other. So it starts really talking about these women uh, in the 60s and 70s. They kind of refuted uh, to be called feminists, most of them. But uh, at the end of the book, the new generation embraces it very much overtly, the term feminism. Uh, and, and, you know, and this is kind of a, a major change that happened uh, in Brazilian art over the last uh, 60 years. So uh, the next image uh, shows you um, Maiolino when uh, in 1974, uh, at the height moment, the most repressive moment of the dictatorship. Before I talk about this image, I'm going to tell you a little, about, a little bit about Maiolino. She was born in 1942 in Italy, so during the beginning of the Second World War. She then went to South America at age 12. She first lived in Venezuela, then she went to Brazil in 1960. Then she came here to New York between 68 and 71 with her husband Rubens Gershman and their two uh, children. And then in 1960, 
1971, she went back to Brazil, and that was the period that was uh, the most repressive uh, time of the dictatorship between 69 and 75. So the, the moment when, uh, you know, this uh, the, the photograph, this series of photograph uh, was done. So here we see uh, Maiolino cutting her nose, but what for me is more important for my discussion is that she's cutting her tongue. And the tongue in Portuguese, uh, the word tongue is lingua, and lingua doesn't mean only tongue, but also language. So here we have her using the, 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 the tongue, right, as the mother language, as this idea of uh, censorship, right, the censorship of the language. You cannot talk right? Your, your, your tongue is being cut. There is this idea of, um, you know, the, the mother tongue, right? In this case, Portuguese. Uh, the tongue as also a site of communication or also the lack of communication for many of the artists of the impossibility of communication. So the tongue is going to be used um, in many ways by these artists in the 60s and 70s uh, during the military regime as metaphors for um, the fact that they could not speak, uh, the fact that they were under self-censorship. This is another work by Maiolino, and here it's also important to say that when she came back from New York to Brazil, uh, artists, and especially women artists, were using Super 8 film and also video. That was the beginning of uh, the use of these mediums because they were available at the time, they were cheap, and they were easy and accessible to be uh, distributed. Um, and so you see that Maiolino is using here a Super 8 uh, movie to to do this work that's called in and out anthropophagy so here you have two uh, two mouths one of Maiolino herself and the other one of a male artist and you can see the last image in the sequence this kind of beard and mustache that you have um, in the image and these two mouses are trying to communicate with each other they're trying to, to talk they're trying to convey some kind of speech but at no uh, avail everything that they do is that it, they exchange sounds right they have no no meaning there was no this like babbling right and there's no narrative really uh that's going into this but as you see she is uh ingesting right the in and expelling the out she is ingesting a piece of a black thread and she's then expelling colored uh, threads and there's also an egg uh, inside of her mouth in one of the shots of this movie. So what is anthropophagy? Anthropophagy, anthropophagy was a term that was um, used by uh, the writer and poet Oswald Jondraje in his Manifesto of Anthropophagy from uh, 1928 in which uh, Oswald Jondraje he uh, urged uh, artists and intellectuals and, and, and to, to kind of, um, you know, swallow, digest, and then regurgitate um, hegemonic cultures in, in a different way, in a way that is more uh, yours. So what I say is that, uh, you, you know, you should appropriate other cultures, in, the, in, in this case, uh, you know, European cultures, the avant-garde European um, at the time, right, in the 20, late 20s. So uh, you should appropriate that uh, culture and then, uh, you know, swallow it and then ingest it and, and transform it into something that is yours, transform it into something that is Brazilian or could be, I think, um, you know, anything that is uh, yours that and, and you see here also the idea of the egg that is in her mouth as this idea of a, a beginning right a life so giving life to something new to something different that is coming um, out of this sequence of, of um, myolinum the next um video that she's going to do also sorry uh, uh also super eight movie wife also from 1974 we're going to see that now Maiolino is uh, blindfolded right and of course the blindfold here uh, refers also to acts uh, acts of uh, of censorship right could be like a, a black target that you use in x-ray movies right about erotic images but also the idea of torture right uh, you know 
putting someone blindfolded, of course, reminds the idea of political prisoners. So you start seeing her uh, like in this kind of black screen. And from this black screen, it cuts to her face with this blindfold, with a close up, the idea of the close up. So using the face as a, 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 the place, the site of affect, right? The, 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 the site that where you can express your sensations. That's what she's doing here. And she is going to um, start making very kind of good row sounds, very kind of heavy, uh, painful sounds. Uh, and then she's going to really open, open the mouth wide open with a very painful scream uh, that you hear from this film and uh, very unnerving uh, noises also. And then uh, she starts telling you names of, of people uh, that, um, you know, fictional people, but she gives them names, she gives them like races, the mixed race people, and they, she talks about their professions too. And she said that these are people that were, they represent the most affected uh, people by the dictatorship uh, at the time. And at the end, you see that, uh, you know, she's not blindfolded anymore, but her eyes are still very much uh, closed. Uh, she's very much uh, into herself, showing this moment of uh, pain that uh, we went through with her during these sequences of sounds, blackouts, and close-ups of her face. Um, another, uh, in another uh, series of photographs calling Little by Little, Mayolina is also going to use uh, the blindfold as a metaphor for this kind of suffocation, right, of the period. She can't see, right, the blindfold first is over her eyes over her nose, little by little, it's coming down. And then at the end, you see that there is this kind of moment of relief. But there is this idea of, I can't breathe, which very much brings us to the present time, right? The idea of the, the, the mask on the face, right? A face that is feeling like, uh, you know, um, very much like suffocated, right? Obl obliterated, right? The idea of repression. And, and, and just little by little, she is revealing uh, her face uh, to us, to the public. And then Maiolino is not only to use, uh, you know, the, the idea of the blindfold, the claws, or the thread uh, that we saw in the beginning, but also the ribbon. So these kinds of pieces of cloth in different formats, right, in different forms, is something that she's going to use uh, a lot uh, in, 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 in some of her works. And I think that, uh, as we talked about, they refer to, uh, you know, decolonial issues, like when we saw saw the, the, the film, the Super 8 in out anthropophagy relating to this idea of decoloniality. But also, uh, as we saw, they refer to the idea of patri uh, the, the, the idea of author uh, authoritar the authoritarian regime, right? The dictatorship. But I also think that they refer to the idea of patriarchal society, which of course, as we said, we talked before, was not something very much mentioned at the time, right? Feminism was not really something very uh, well received at this time in Brazil, was seen as something that was exported from the U.S., was seen as something that was uh, divisive, the left considered it divisive, the left considered that only uh, the only enemy, uh, the common enemy was the dictatorship and therefore issues related to the emancip emancipation of women, abortion, uh, divorce, uh, and all these women issues, they were like secondary, they were too personal, they were too subjective, so they were kind of dismissed, you know, what was important at the time was really the, 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 the dictatorship. Um, and, and, and because of that, those kinds of issues related to women uh, were put aside. But you see that uh, Maiolino is anyway dealing with them, right? She is here using this, um, she's using this ribbon to, to kind of gift wrap 
her face, and then there is a bow on the left side of her face. So she's prepping herself as a gift, right? And of course, it talks about beauty. It talks about desire. It talks about the commodification of women in society, women made to be consumed, right? In society, women as objects. So I think that it is there, and there's no way not to see it there in this uh, photographic series. But as I told you, this was kind of a transgressive work for its own time, believe it or not, because women were male peers, but they would talk about whatever it is, but not really about women issues. This was not something that was very uh, well seen at the time. Uh, another artist that I'd like to discuss here today with you is Sonia Andrade, who uh, did a series of eight videos between 1974 and 77, and this is just one of the eight videos uh, that she does also with a, a, a strand of nylon, right? So the idea of the thread. So we're talking about, you know, the face, the mouth, the tongue, the thread, the ribbon, right? The piece of cloth. These are all elements that were being kind of juxtaposed, right, uh, at the time to express uh, uh, this idea of fear, this idea of, um, in this case, also endurance, right? And you see here that the, the thread goes through her pierced ear, right? The thread of nylon and go then uh, goes around her face. I have a few images here to share with you how she is, uh, you know, putting it around her face, this thread. And at the end, you see how her face become distorted. Her face become uh, like, even like grotesque, I would say, there is this kind of objection of her face, but I can look at how the mouth is covered, how she cannot talk, right? Uh, very much it's sealed her mouth. Again, the same kind of iconography of the mouth, the tone, the face that these artists are using to express angst, to express the, the terror of the moment. And Sonia Andrade is one of the artists that was very, very adamant about not being a feminist. She didn't want this work to be read into feminist lenses. She said that uh, her work was about the dictatorship and it was the struggle about the dictatorship, was about censorship, right? It was about the fact that um, you know, the torture, the pain uh, in the body. So the, the body as the site of pain, of pain, of endurance. But again, I think it's very hard not to read these works today, uh, also addressing the fact that they uh, talk about conventional beauty, right? They distort that, they transgress the idea of uh, beauty as the way it is expected of uh, women, the standards of beauty. I think uh, the work also talks about that, but, uh, um, going back to my point, this was not something that she would um, express uh, at the time. Um, so the women were part of the discussion, but what they, could they say? You know, what kind of works could they make? Uh, in which way they were part of the discussion? I think this is a question that has to be raised. What was the what were the constraints about uh, their visibility, their participation in the discourse? Okay, so um, and the last artist that I want to talk to you today is Leticia Parenti who uh, also is dealing with very similar issues about censorship, uh, about not being able to bear witness uh, at the time. And you see that she is in the bathroom in front of the mirror and she is uh, pretending to be putting makeup on her face. But as the, 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 the video, it's a video, the video starts moving on, you see that's really she's putting a surgical tape over her mouth and over the tape she is uh, you know, putting some lipstick in the shape of the mouse. And then she does the same with her eyes. She puts tape over the eyes and then she draws an eye over the tape. So basically she can talk and she cannot see, right? Uh, and there is this idea of, um, playing, of course, with the dictatorship, right? I, I, I can see, I don't know what's happening. Um, I'm, I'm kind of, uh, you know, my, my, my rights as a civil citizen was were taken away from me, right? Uh, I'm under uh, censorship, but also there is also, I think, this idea 
of uh, talking about the conventions of beauty, the norms imposed on women's body, the way we have to wear makeup, right, to beautify. And here she's doing this to express, uh, on the contrary, to, 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 to talk about how this is so restrictive uh, for her as a woman, right? How this takes away her voice or her vision uh, of the world, right? How these are norms imposed on women. So I think that really uh, what my talk was today was about this transgressive gender norms and uh, taboos that women were addressing in creative ways, right? They are uh, resisting patriarchy, right? The authoritarian regime, the idea of coloniality, right? Uh, but also they are very much addressing the discipline of the women body and how they want to go against it and how they want to transgress uh, there through their works. Uh, and in this case, using the face, the mouth and the tongue. So I'm going to stop here and I'm going to leave the rest for our discussion when we see each other live. Thank you very much.